Hello everyone and welcome. In this video sponsored by Advanced Auto Parts, we are looking at the differences between mechanical throttle bodies versus electronic throttle bodies. We're going to be discussing why electronic throttle bodies lead to a common problem with modern manual transmissions, rev hang. So first off, let's define everything we're discussing. This is a mechanical throttle body and it is directly linked to the driver through the accelerator pedal. So as you press down on that accelerator pedal, it forces a cable to rotate the throttle valve to allow more air to pass into the engine. As you get more air into the engine, it injects more fuel and you make more power. So the driver is directly controlling how much airflow the engine gets. An electronic throttle eliminates that direct link between the driver and the throttle. So now when you press on the accelerator pedal, a position sensor tells a controller, which tells an electric motor, how much to open up this throttle valve. However, it can listen to other inputs and choose the exact amount it wants to open up. It doesn't have to directly listen to exactly what the driver is telling it to do. And finally, rev hang, which makes shifting in manual transmissions slow and jerky. Rev hang is caused by electronic throttles, not heavy flywheels, which close slowly upon the driver lifting their foot from the accelerator pedal. So once you go to upshift, the revs remain high and they slowly start dropping down. So then once you actually let the clutch out, it yanks those revs down and it jerks the car. Now a big thanks to Advanced Auto Parts for sending parts for this video demonstration. You can use the Advanced Auto Parts mobile app for your car part needs. So how did we get from here to here? Well, despite what many enthusiasts will say about electronic throttles, there's actually quite a few advantages that they offer. Yes, mechanical throttles will give you the best direct response of the throttle valve. And it's a simple system and it basically eliminates rev hang, which will be the main focus of this video. All great things. However, electronically controlled throttles come with many benefits. And you may be surprised to learn that one of them is actually improved pedal feel. So how in the world can electronic throttle improve feel versus a purely mechanical system that's literally attached to your foot? So something you may have noticed if you've driven cars with mechanical throttle bodies is that how much you press in that accelerator pedal doesn't necessarily correlate linearly with how much torque you end up getting. So why is that? Well, look at what's going on with that throttle body. So let's say your throttle valve is completely closed and then you open it up 10%. Well, that's a massive percentage increase in how much airflow you were allowing to pass by from going from zero to 10%. Then as you open from 10% to 20% open, that's a 100% increase in how open that throttle position is. So a lot of air you're allowing to now come by, so you're gonna see a nice bump in torque very quickly. But then as you open that more and more from 20 to 30, percent only a 50 percent increase from 40 percent open to 50 percent open only a 25 percent increase finally getting from 90 percent to 100 percent open fully open that throttle valve just an 11 percent increase in that actual space that you're allowing that airflow to come through so what this means if you look at a graph of torque versus throttle position with a mechanical throttle you're going to see torque increase very quickly initially as you dip into that accelerator pedal and then kind of slow and taper off as you get further closer to 100 percent with an electronic throttle body you can make that torque versus throttle position curve look like whatever you want so you can have a linear correlation between how much did you press the accelerator pedal and how much torque do you actually get out of your engine how does it do this well, it simply opens up the throttle less than what you asked for. And so if you give it 25% throttle with a mechanical throttle, you might get 50% of your torque versus with an electronic throttle, it'll say, okay, well, they want 25% of their torque because they put the throttle position down to 25%. So it's going to limit how much it actually opens up this throttle valve. So you get exactly 25% torque rather than whatever that mechanically would be based on how much you've pressed the accelerator pedal. The other thing you have to take into consideration is your engine RPM. And so think about an engine at 2000 RPM versus 6000 RPM. Well, if it's rotating three times as fast, then it needs three times as much air. And so what that means is you very likely don't need wide open throttle at low RPM in order to get peak torque. So if you look at a torque versus throttle position curve here, and in our example, we're just gonna say at 2000 RPM, you only need 25% of that throttle position opening in order to get peak torque because you don't have that much airflow coming in. 
And so with a mechanical system, you're gonna hit that peak torque at 25% of that accelerator pedal pressing, and then you've just got 75% of that zone where it makes no difference where your foot is on that accelerator pedal. It makes no difference in how much torque you're actually getting. Versus an electronic throttle, you could tune for different RPM. So if you're at 2000 RPM, you could flatten that down so that actually wherever your foot is on that accelerator pedal actually correlates to that percentage of torque, which will feel very intuitive to the driver. But that's simply one of many, many advantages. Electronic throttles can provide better tuning of cruise control. They can allow for smoother shifts with automatic transmissions. They can improve how quickly catalytic converters heat up by controlling the balance of air-fuel ratios and throttle position. They can improve throttle control during cylinder deactivation. They can remove driving jerk and manual transmission vehicles. And they can provide safety features like improvements for stability control, traction control, and reducing throttle input if the brake pedal is pressed. There's a long list of benefits and one, just one of those many benefits is how electronic throttles can improve emissions. So how do electronic throttle bodies lead to better emissions and how does this lead to rev hang? So I found a study from the 1990s that details this process. And so the important thing to know is that catalytic converters, which are used to improve the emissions from your car, are effective in a narrow air fuel ratio range. So the amount of air and fuel entering your cylinders, that ratio is very important for controlling emissions and your catalytic converter is very sensitive to that ratio. So according to this study, if your engine is running at a rich air fuel ratio, then you're going to have a high amount of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon emissions exiting that catalytic converter. And likewise, if you are running your engine at a lean air fuel ratio, then you're going to see a large amount of nitrogen oxide emissions coming out of that catalytic converter. So it's absolutely critical that you properly control the air fuel ratio. So what's the scenario where it is difficult to control that air fuel ratio? Well, throttle tip in and throttle tip out. So tip in is when your throttle is closed and then you open it very quickly. Tip out is when that throttle is open and then you close it very quickly. And so if you look at what's going on in an engine in these scenarios, you can see why that air fuel ratio changes. So with tip in, your throttle valve is closed and then you open it. And as you open it, you have a rush of air go in that engine. And depending on the engine's ability to time that fuel injection, initially you're gonna have a lot of air in that cylinder and not enough fuel to make up for it. So you'll see a lean spike. And then with tip out, what you'll do is you'll close that throttle valve, shutting off the air, but you're still injecting fuel. And so now you have a rich air fuel spike uh, in the air fuel ratio. And so the challenge here is that you wanna maintain kind of a flat line here of that air fuel ratio, rather than these big variances that you see in order to keep it out of these regions where emissions will be poor. Enter the electronic throttle valve. So here's where we finally get to understand why rev hang exists. Looking at the results of this study, comparing a mechanical throttle body in red to an electronic throttle body in blue here. And so we're looking at the throttle position, the air fuel ratio, and hydrocarbon emissions. And so what they noticed during a gear shift, what we're looking at right here is a gear shift. So we're on the throttle, we, we let off the throttle, press in the clutch, so then you're completely off the throttle, then you shift to the next gear, let out the clutch, get back on the throttle, and there you can see you're back on the throttle. And so what they noticed occurs with the mechanical throttle body is during that gear shift, when you have that tip out scenario, you have a rich air fuel mixture. And so as that air fuel mixture goes rich, you have a spike in hydrocarbon emissions. And so this is what they're looking to control using this electronic throttle body. And so what they do is two things. First, they cut fuel, but there's still some fuel remaining once you close that throttle valve. So instead of closing it very quickly, you delay that throttle valve closing, so you burn off that remaining fuel. And in doing so, that means your engine RPM slowly drops. So you cut fuel, you delay the throttle, but it maintains your air-fuel ratio at a low point, they actually cut fuel, so here you see that spike of it being very lean, but you're just not injecting any fuel. But you maintain that basically flat line of air-fuel ratio outside of that, and in doing so, by delaying that throttle closure, you don't have that rich mixture ever occur, 
and in doing so you don't have these hydrocarbons occur. And so the benefit is that you have reduced now your hydrocarbon emissions. Now one of the interesting things from this study is that they actually didn't see an improvement using the electronic throttle on nitrogen oxide emissions. However, the important thing was they wanted to be able to control that air fuel ratio in order to control emissions and in doing so using that electronic throttle and delaying the throttle closure means you are going to have that rev hang occur where your RPM does not drop quickly when you're shifting gears. Now obviously today's engines are much more advanced than the ones used in the testing of this study in the 1990s and so today's engines are able to change parameters much more quickly and they have much more computational power. However the problem of rev hang still exists. And one of the unique challenges uh, still existing with modern transmissions, modern manual transmission vehicles, is when they are matched with engines using port injection. And so what happens is a process where you have wall wetting. So for example, let's say you're shifting gears and you let off the throttle to shift gears. Well, as that throttle closes, you still have some fuel remaining on the walls of that intake port. And so even though your fuel has been shut off immediately, that fuel on the intake port there uh, is still gonna work its way into the engine. And so because you don't have any air going in, you're going to have a rich air fuel mixture and you're still gonna have those hydrocarbon emissions. So if you delay that throttle closure, which of course causes rev hang, you can burn off that remaining fuel that's stuck on those intake port walls as it works its way into the engine. Now of course direct injection won't have this problem because it's not injecting into those intake port walls, it's injecting directly into the cylinder. And that doesn't necessarily mean that direct injection engines won't have rev hang. There's still reasons why it can exist. Uh, but between my two personal vehicles, my Subaru Crosstrek and my Mazda MX-5, which has direct injection, uh, the Subaru Crosstrek, which has port injection, has significantly more rev hang. So a big thanks to Advanced Auto Parts for sponsoring the video. Of course, check out the link in the video description and check out their mobile app. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below. Thanks for watching.